everyone. I'm so glad you can join us right now. Yes. Even though we're not meeting in person, we can still worship together anytime, yeah. anywhere. So just join us. God bless you, everybody. Thank you for tuning in and being with us tonight. I am Pastor Jake, and this is my best friend, mm. my wife, hello, the mother of my children, my partner in crime, I don't know, uh, all the different <laughs> uh, titles. She's all that and a bag of chips. I love that her. Nice. How are you doing? How's everyone doing over there? Great. Uh, we're doing great. <laughs> Thank you. No, everything's going well. That's yes. good. You look good. You look Thank you. healthy and strong and happy and yes. blessed. Good, yes. good. How are you guys doing out there? Is everyone doing good? 
You know what's it's crazy because we're in June and it is like almost halfway through the year. Mm -hmm. A lot of graduations. I know we talk about people who are who have been sick, um, maybe have been exposed or come down with COVID. And it's something very real to us, mm -hmm. people that we don't want them to feel like we're not praying for them. Other people like Vanessa Rivas, who just had yep. major surgery, uh, many, many other needs. And I feel like we're always bringing the needs before the church family to pray for these people because we don't want them to feel forgotten or that we're not praying for them. Right. So it's important for us to try to mention these things. But also it's a time of celebration because there's been so many graduations uh, mm -hmm. for high school students, for college students, for kids who are uh, even uh, kindergarten, kids uh, um, from elementary going into middle school, kids in middle school going to high school. Um, mm -hmm. And you know what? I think we're just trying to find as much as we can to celebrate and just to, there's so many things, struggles and challenges that we go through that it's important to um, to celebrate yeah. uh, what we can and just make a big deal out of people's accomplishments. And uh, so we, we just have been the last few weeks going to a lot of uh, graduations and parties and milestones mm -hmm. for families, for kids, uh, people of all ages. So we wanted to mention that it's pretty hard to believe that we're halfway through the year. That's really crazy. And it's going by quick, and uh, we're just uh, we're encouraged that God is with us. How many of you believe that God, He never leaves us, He never forsakes us, He uh, is going to get us through what mm -hmm. we're facing? So every person that that we've been praying for, we continue to pray for you. We continue Amen. to lift you up. When you write your prayer requests in the comments, we we see them. We add them to our prayer list at the yeah. church. People respond in real time. They write. You know, we're praying for you, we're right. thinking of you, and that's what God wants us to continue to do. He also wants us to continue to declare His goodness and just uh, and just be hopeful in our hearts and that um, that He's just going to bring us through. So, as uh, uh, like always, we're in the middle of this uh, sermon series, The Names of God. So mm -hmm. write that down, The Names of God. If you're, if you're joining us, maybe it's your first time seeing this series. We've been... This is our, our week eight, and we're, we've been really enjoying all the different names of mm -hmm. God and how the different names of God reveal His different the, the different parts of His personality, the attributes of His character. It's been very incredible every week to take one name and really get into the depth of it. Very, very powerful. Um, mm -hmm. And we have a name that I think a lot of people are very familiar with and uh the name that we're going to start with tonight, tonight's sermon title is this, the name Abba. Abba. And if you look at that name, you know, some of you, if you're old enough, probably think of the the Swedish band, you know, Abba. And that's that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is Abba Father, mm -hmm. uh, that name Abba Father. And uh, the reason it's so meaningful to people is because it has been known and understood. A lot of preachers and pastors and evangelists have preached the the name. You might you might know the name Abba. I've heard Abba Father, and you may be familiar if you've heard sermons or people talk about it. That another way um, that people explain it is Daddy God, Daddy God, and I've heard that over and over and mm -hmm. over. And you know, I'm a minister. I'm a preacher, and I've just kind of accepted that you hear Daddy God and uh, you're like, that must be what it means because people preach it. And I've heard that quite a mm -hmm. bit. I don't know if you've ever heard that. Mm -hmm. I've heard that. Um, and I am not here to say that that's incorrect or that's, that's not accurate. But I will say that scholars are not in complete agreement on the, right. the full origin uh, of that. And, and it's very close to what scholars understand. But when you hear the name Abba, um, you know, we're not talking about a Swedish group, you know, a dancing queen and all that other kind of stuff. When you mm -hmm. hear it in the context of scripture, it's been preached and taught over and over, you know, that that's daddy God. You can crawl up on his lap and look into his face and say, daddy God, daddy God. And that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's actually pretty, that's very close, to, uh, to the, to the meaning. But I, what I want to give you is to the best of the ability of, of the collective, you know, uh, the scholars and the, and the great minds that have studied the original languages, I want to give you the meaning. And this is the meaning. Write this down. It means, my father who I obey. Hmm. My father who I obey. 
And the reason that's significant is because there's very much a part of, as we get into the, the original word in the language, as we study this, you will see the heart of, of why people talk about daddy God. But what's sad is if you miss the full definition, my father, which is where that intimacy is, powerful, my father, but the second part, who I obey, I haven't heard that very much preached and taught as people have shared, you know, Abba Father. When I hear Abba Father, I think of that phrase that has been going around, Daddy God. And yet when we study the, the true, true meaning, it literally means my father who I obey. So we're going to get into that. And if you think of the name Father, um, it appears over 700, or I'm sorry, 979 times in the Bible. So obviously we have our heavenly father and you see that in scripture. Mm -hmm. We have earthly fathers and you just see that it's just in God's word in the Old Testament and the New Testament. So to hear the name Abba or Abba Father, um, there's many different uh, definitions of father, many different contexts. So when you hear Abba Father, it means my father whom I will obey. It's powerful. And mm -hmm. I want to give you the scripture that everybody knows when you hear Abba Father and you hear Daddy God, people who preach, you know, those messages and those sermons, mm -hmm. it comes out of Romans chapter 8. And it's in verse 15. We're going to read that in a moment. But all of Romans chapter 8, it's, it's very, it's worth studying. It's worth reading. But it's talking about um, the Holy Spirit. It's talking about our prayer language and how the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit helps us um, pray in ways that are in our own natural understanding we don't understand but our spirit cries out to God and the Holy Spirit helps with that and it also talks about the flesh and it talks about the old way of living there's an entire context in Romans chapter 8 and when you hear the meaning my father who I obey that's the full definition of that short word Abba um, and it's really in the context of that uh, it's not just you know daddy god and like mm -hmm. there's this god who loves me um you really have to understand the full chapter and many other places in the bible to understand my father who i obey mm -hmm. but i want to read that scripture that we all know and that's where a lot of people a lot of sermons a lot of messages and that that trend uh, that popular trend of people saying abba means daddy god comes out of this this verse and you'll mm -hmm. see it it's romans chapter 8 verse 15 and it says this for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. So that's powerful. Um, it literally says in that phrase, Abba, Father. So for us reading the Word of God in modern times, we look at that and we, we <clears throat> just hear a lot of sermons, like I said, where people say, you know what that means? That phrase means, you know, Daddy, God. And that's accurate. It, it, it does mean it's an Arabic phrase, actually. Mm -hmm. And it's even a shorter version, um, Ab, A-B. As you really get into the original language and you study it, uh, it does, it can, it can, one of the definitions can mean daddy. And that is, it's not inaccurate. It's, it's not wrong when you've heard these messages and these sermons. Right. But the sad thing is, is it's not the entire or the full definition. My father, what's the most important part? who I obey, my father who I obey. And I heard a story of a Christian who is traveling to Israel and he landed in Tel Aviv, which is where, where the airport is, it's where you come <clears> in and I've been there too. And he said, this Christian said, I was excited to be in the Holy Land. I was excited to visit uh, Israel. And I had landed at the airport and I went into the restroom. He said it was a long flight, so I was mm -hmm. just going to use the restroom. And he said, I, I was washing my hands and I saw this Jewish father and this very, very young son. And the, the, son, um, the father told the son, I want you to wash your hands. Wash your hands. And the son at first said, no, no, daddy. And he said, I'm Abba. I want you to wash your hands. Mm -hmm. And this Christian who watched this, this was his first experience, and he got excited. Guess what he was thinking of? He was thinking of Romans chapter 8, and he says, I know that word, Abba. Uh, mm -hmm. And it seems like the Father said it in a way that I didn't quite understand. So I asked after the child washed his hands, I said, excuse me, sir. And this is the businessman, the Christian right. who is on that trip. He said, excuse me, sir, I heard you say something to your son. And it, it was almost in a form of correction. I've always understood that to be a very sweet term of endearment. But right. you said to your son, I'm Abba. Why did you say that to your son? Uh, help me understand that. And he says, 
Whenever I ask him to call me Abba or to see me as Abba, that means that you, you have to obey. I'm dad, listen. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that, he's, that businessman said, I never fully understood in all the sermons I heard and everything else, when I, when I saw it in, in the original language and that original culture and that father, we've all had kids where you tell your kids, wash your hands, and they kind of fight you on that and everything. And the father said, I'm Abba. And that was a powerful lesson for that mm. businessman, that Christian who was there saying, you know what, when we hear uh, Daddy God, it's almost like I can just be close to God. I can snuggle on his lap. That's what I've heard in many, many messages. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want, if you want, uh, especially in the rest of that scripture where it says you don't have to be afraid, but with a spirit of adoption, that's where we cry out, Abba, Father. So he's accessible and you're, he's this big, powerful God that you can crawl right on his lap and have this closeness. I've heard so many different messages, but one of, one of the things I haven't heard a whole lot about, and it was foreign to this Christian businessman who was traveling to Jerusalem, it was foreign to him, but when he heard that, that Jewish father say to his son, I'm Abba. Mm -hmm. What he was trying to say to his son is obey me, right. wash your hands, listen to me. And that gave that, that Christian businessman a whole new understanding. Mm -hmm. And this was all in my research for the message and kind of reading together right. and everything. I was like, you know, as, as Christians, we, we really like the idea of daddy God. We like the idea of closeness with God. But I'm going to tell you this, mm -hmm. and, and you might want to write this down. Write this down, church. It's powerful. There is no intimacy without obedience. Hmm. There is no intimacy without obedience. And why is that so powerful? That's powerful because as Christians, we love intimacy. We love the idea that there is this daddy God mm -hmm. that we can go to and crawl on his lap and just be so close with. But there is a God mm -hmm. who is Abba. And his name means my father. So that my is personal, my father. Right. I didn't have a father. I was fatherless by the spirit of adoption. I cry out, Abba. So he's my father. There's the intimacy. But there's no intimacy without obedience. obedience. And when that child washed his hands and that businessman was able to ask that father, why did you say I am Abba in, in a seemingly corrective or harsh way. Mm -hmm. And that man in his <clears throat> native tongue and his language says, that's what Abba means. It means I'm your dad. Listen to me. Do what I say. And uh, that really changed that man's thinking after hearing probably like the rest of us, many sermons about this. It's not just this sweet, oh, mm -hmm. I love you, daddy God. It really means you're my daddy God. I love you. But also with that, with that intimacy, there's what? obedience right. and how often do we leave out the obedience so we don't want to do that we don't want to leave out the obedience and of course we have two truths for you that we want to give you as we study the name abba and the first truth is this write this down church i'm intimate with my father it's powerful i'm intimate with my father that's what we want to be that's the point i'm intimate with my father and God wants us, that's where you do find that heart of the teaching of, of Daddy God and that, that God wants to be an intimate God. He's a God who knows us. Um, the Bible tells us that He knows every hair on our heads and some of us have more than others. And God, you know, He rejoices over us with singing and mm -hmm. dancing. There's countless scriptures that says we're inscri inscribed upon the palm of His hands. There's so many scriptures that just talk about how God's desire is to be intimate with us and how God longs to be close to us. And that's, that's a powerful thought. So we don't want to just mm -hmm. put that part to the side. What you have been taught is correct. When people talk about Abba Father, I've heard people pray that. Daddy God, Abba Father. Um, that's a very, very real part of that name, Abba Father. Um, but I'm intimate with my father. That's the truth. We have a couple scriptures we want to share with you. The first one is James chapter 4, verse 8. Okay, it says, Move your heart closer and closer to God, and he will come even closer to you. Now, we know probably the other translation mm -hmm. says, Draw near to God, and he will draw near to mm -hmm. you. I like this translation, this translation that says, Move your heart, what? Closer, closer and closer to God, and he will come even closer to you. When we move our heart closer and closer to God, that's an effort of intimacy. Right. Intimacy is a two-way street, and God is always, it says he'll move even closer to you. That means God is constantly 
as, as close to us as we allow him to be. Right. And when we move our heart closer and closer to him, he's already right there waiting, mm -hmm. saying, I am ready for the next level of intimacy. Yes the next level of knowing you, uh, but it's, it's, it's upon us. We have to do it. So that truth, I'm intimate with my father. The way we become intimate with him is pursuing him, getting closer and closer mm -hmm. to him. And we, and it goes on to say in that same scripture that we have to purify ourselves um, and that we have, you know, to, to, to have clean hands and a pure heart. That's what God wants us to do. You cannot get closer and closer to God and remain lost in sin or remain in your old ways. Part of intimacy is holiness and just um, pursuing God that way. So that was that first scripture. We have another scripture we want to give you. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. It says, So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God, there we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. That's a powerful scripture. <clears throat> the first few words that, that, that you see, it says, so, so what? So let us come boldly. boldly. And then it says to the throne of our gracious God. Normally, when you picture any kind of throne in any kind of context, you don't, you don't picture somebody coming in rambunctiously or being obnoxious mm -hmm. or boisterous barging into a room and you know if there's a king upon a throne that you should be reverent and you that you're approaching something that's majestic and grand and just powerful but what the bible says is that we can what come boldly to the throne of our gracious mm -hmm. god and that's by invitation only when god says i'm allowing that to happen if you study in the old testament Esther and her fear of coming before that earthly king and, and saying, you know what, if he doesn't raise up his scepter and he doesn't accept me, it could mean the penalty of death. Mm -hmm. And I want to speak on behalf of my people, the Hebrews, and try to, you know, try to stand up for them for such a time as this. God's placed me in the palace and in the kingdom. But she didn't have a natural boldness. She had uh, mm -hmm. uh, an understandable fear that this could not go well. I might not be accepted. I'm not just going to barge into that room where the throne is right. and just say, I have an emergency. I have a need for my people. She understood and she prayed and she fasted and she was prepared and she had women help and support her. And then she went before the king and the king accepted her. That's the story in the Old Testament. And God is the same kind of God with the same kind of you know, even more, the respect, the majesty, the, the creator of the universe. Mm -hmm. um, and God's saying, I don't want you to be fearful. I want you to come boldly to mm -hmm. the throne of our gracious God. And he says, there you're going to receive his, his mercy. We will find grace to help us when we need it most. most yeah. That's intimacy. That's being accessible. Right. God's saying, you know what? You're yeah. my son. You're my daughter. Mm -hmm. And that's how kids run to their parents. Now, uh, if there was a there was an earthly king and there was a child, maybe not in every circumstance or every situation, mm -hmm. but that's the relationship <clears throat> that children have with parents. I could see a child of a king not really feeling fearful at all, but in that court where others would be fearful, uh -huh. that child really understanding if it was a parent who loved them, who happened to be a king or a queen, would run boldly knowing that that's daddy, that's mommy, that's, that's the person who loves me. Right. And that's what God wants us to see. He wants us to be intimate. Right. And he says, you have that access. You can come closer and closer. And we don't, God doesn't want us to to be fearful. He doesn't right. want us to, he wants us to have that kind of closeness with him. So I want you to write down this truth because these two words are so close to each other. I really think it's going to mm -hmm. bless you. Write down this truth. God wants us to be intimate, not intimidated. Mm -hmm. And if you look at your relationship with God, you're one of those two things. Mm -hmm. I know plenty of people who are intimidated by God, the father, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, they understand his power. They understand his majesty. They understand that it's not something to be taken lightly. But for whatever reason, they haven't established that intimacy. Mm -hmm. So there's, they're intimidated. And God doesn't want his children being right. intimidated. What about the fear of God? The fear of God is a respectful and real thing. It's almost like Esther's heart towards the king. The understanding that this should not be taken lightly. But Romans mm -hmm. 8 talks about that we are his children by which not under a spirit of bondage or slavery right. um, to fear, but as his children that we, through the spirit of adoption by which we cry, Abba, Father, 
when God raises his scepter and he grants us access, he wants us to come boldly, mm -hmm. joyfully before him and mm -hmm. to say, God, you're my source. The scripture says we're going to receive his mercy. And it's at that place where we find grace to help us when we need it most. Right. So what was point number one? I'm intimate with my father. Now you're either intimate with him or you're intimidated by him. Right. And I've been both many, many times in my life. There's times where that intimacy is there. My heart is moving closer and closer to him. And there's other times where it's intimidating. And, uh, and I know this, God is not meaning to be intimidating. It's right. just that I'm not understanding his word if I'm not turning that being intimidated into intimacy. Right. If you struggle with being intimidated, it might be your earthly father, right. it might be your upbringing, it might be your life experience, right. but there's a God who loves you, says, I've adopted you, you were fatherless, now I'm your father, mm -hmm. I'm Abba, I'm Daddy God. But we have to understand that it's not just intimacy, and that brings us to point number two. Yep. Please write this down, church. Point number two is this, I'm obedient to my father. <clears throat> and this is the part of the name Abba that we don't hear a whole lot about. We hear people talk about Daddy God. I hear people mention that and pray that. And that is very accurate. Mm -hmm. That's very much a part of the name Abba. But when you go back to that story of that Christian businessman yeah. who heard that Jewish father and that, that small son in that restroom at the airport and he said, wash your hands. And the kid didn't do it. And the father said, I'm Abba. That what what is what is the heart of that? I'm obedient to my father. And that's what God wants from us. He says, You can be intimate with me. You can have Daddy God. But there mm -hmm. also is an obedience that we have to walk in in order to have that right. intimacy with God. And you don't hear a whole lot about that preached a lot in churches. It's one thing to want intimacy with God or to crawl up in his lap right. or the imagery of Daddy God. We want to just have that. But in our flesh, we struggle. In our selfishness and in our sin, we struggle with being obedient, obedient yeah. to the God, Obe uh, to our God, to our Father. Obedience is, is so much, it's, it's a lifelong struggle for every single one of us. Mm -hmm. So this is not new to us. I, I know you understand that. But when you hear the name of a Father, you probably think Daddy God. What you might not think is my Father who I obey, obey. Mm -hmm. and God the obedience to God is paramount. It's as important to him as intimacy. In fact, the two are, are synonymous with each other. They go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. Right. And, and, and they, they complement each other mm -hmm. so well. God doesn't want us to just obey him and him be this distant God. Right. And he also doesn't want to provide intimacy with lawlessness and right. rule and just not, you know, just being undisciplined and living however you want. They go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So here's a couple of scriptures we want to give you. So good. John chapter 14, verse 15. It says, If you love me, obey my commandments. And that's Jesus. That's mm -hmm. the words of Jesus talking to his disciples. If you love me, obey my commandments. What a great uh, test to really see our love for God. When I hear people say, I love God, I'm so passionate about God, I try not to be judgmental because yeah. I look at my own life. Mm -hmm. But when we say collectively, we love God, God is incredible, and we put all the right bumper stickers on our car, we wear all the right Christian shirts, mm -hmm. we're lifting our hands in worship, if, if, if you leave the church and you're not obeying his commandments, the question becomes, do we really love him according to Jesus? Mm -hmm. I think Jesus struggled with his disciples and said, you know what? You, you proclaim and declare your love mm -hmm. for me, but you're not obeying my commandments. And mm -hmm. at the same time, you know, in the Old Testament, the Bible would say, you know, with their lips, they praise me, but in their hearts, they're far away from mm -hmm. me. It's the same idea, the same thought that we struggle with obedience. And God says they're one and the same. Love and obey. Right. Love and obedience. Abba, Father. You know, you can't have one without the other. Right. We want to be intimate, but how well do we obey? That's really the question. Here's another scripture we have. You know, you said something to oh. me. Um, I know I'm kind of jumping in here. Um, our dog was like uh he was acting up and so we corrected him stop don't do that and then he wanted all he wanted to do is be like right next yeah. to us and was like trying to lick our face and just like being submissive but just trying to i would almost say like intimate he wanted to connect yeah. with us and it was kind of like they do go hand in hand with each other right before we were filming this we normally put him in the kennel because he's a wild man he's kind of crazy <laughs> in fact we'll put a picture of him up right now here's a picture 
uh, her, his full name, Jackson Von Oliver Wally LeBlanc Ishmael. That's his name. And we'll get into that later. <laughs> no, we won't. We'll just tell you. We name our dogs crazy names. Yeah. But before we, um, before we film, we put them in the kennel. And I'm not going to lie. I, we bribe them sometimes with treats. So I, I said, or I'm trying to get to where we can film. And right. I, I, I put the treat in the kennel. That was the bribe. And he didn't go for it. <laughs> he knew that he was about to have to go in the kennel and he wanted to be with us. So I put the treat in the kennel and I looked at it and I, and I said, I'm gonna try to reason with him. I'm like, <laughs> Jax, just go in the kennel. This won't be long. And I used the soft voice. You can do it, buddy. Go in the kennel, we'll be done shortly. And I'm telling you, that dog, almost like he understood every word I was saying, <laughs> he walked in the kennel and he didn't even go for his treat that I put in there as a bribe. And he turned around and he looked at me with his face and there was, which is kind of rare, right. there was pure obedience in that moment. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. And I closed the door and then we came down here, we started filming the message, but Jill talking about our dog is very, very accurate. Mm -hmm. You know, um, he's a cute dog, but when he doesn't obey, it puts us at odds. Sure. And that's, ex isn't it funny how God reveals our spiritual walk with him with things that are practical mm -hmm. in our lives? And when we're walking the dog and I'm pu he's pulling me on the leash or Jill, mm -hmm. and I'm like, God, this is so frustrating. What do you think God says? You're no different in life when, when I'm trying to lead yeah. you or guide you and you fight me every step of the way. So God teaches us through our children, through our pets, right. through our jobs, through um, being cut off on the highway. And, and Jill and I might not make a whole lot of sense to people out there, but it might connect with some of you who are listening to that, that you cannot separate love and obedience. Right. You can't separate the two. Just like Jill was saying about our dog, uh, he doesn't always obey. Mm -hmm. When he doesn't obey, he's a little stinker. And when he does obey, it makes us feel that much more closer to right. him and that like jill was saying him being closer to us and they say dogs in general especially french bulldogs they're a breed that likes to please and likes to that approval so we see it from time to time um it's kind of <laughs> rare but we see him when he obeys and it working on that. it touches your heart yeah. it makes you feel i don't know if anything makes you feel closer and that's what jesus was saying um if you love me obey my commandments right. we have another scripture for you Luke chapter 6, verse 46. It says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not tell and do and not do and not do what I tell you? Sorry. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, uh -huh. and not do what I tell you? That's what the name Lord yes. means. So we call out to God and we say, Lord, Lord. Mm -hmm. And then he immediately evaluates even that name. Why do you, and that's the same with Abba. Why do you call me something that's meaningless because you're not doing what I tell you to do? Well, we want to be close to you. Right. We want the blessings from you. We want Abba Father. We want Daddy God. And God says, I want a kid that listens. Mm -hmm. I want a kid that washes their hands when I tell you to. Right. Just like that other illustration, that analogy. So Jesus, you know, struggled constantly in the scripture. Why do you call me Lord, Lord uh, mm -hmm. and not do what I tell you to? And that's something that we always have to work on as mm -hmm. his children. We have to do our best to obey. And that obedience unlocks the key to intimacy. It's so powerful. You can't have one without the, without the other. Mm -hmm. This last scripture, I absolutely love it. It's not a life scripture of mine. Um, it's, I've read it before, but in studying for this message, mm -hmm. I heard it again and I thought, man, mm -hmm. how powerful is this verse? So write this down, uh, get this in your heart. Job 36, verse 11. Okay, it says, if they serve and obey him, he will make them successful and they will live a happy life. Another translation says prosperous um, mm -hmm. and they will have, um, they will live a pleasant life. And it's, just, it's, it's all the mm -hmm. same. It's the idea that if we serve and obey God, what does God have in store for us? Right. We're going to be successful. We're going to be prosperous. We're going to have a happy, a fruitful life. And that's, that's the promises of God's word. Mm -hmm. And yet, in our flesh, we don't want to obey. Right. The culture of the world around us tells us, you know, put yourself first. You don't have to listen. You don't mm -hmm. have to submit. You don't have to obey. We have an adversary, an enemy, constantly just trying to get us to a place of rebellion and just going away from God mm -hmm. and His Word. So it is a daily and constant struggle of obedience to God. And yet God says, if you serve and obey me, you're going to have a successful and you're going to have a happy life. Mm -hmm. And that's what God has for every single one of us. What's the key to a successful, uh, a prosperous, a happy life? 
It's being obedient to God. Mm -hmm. You're not going to find it any other way. You're not going to have the access to the intimacy of Abba Father, to Daddy God, and not do what he tells you to do. I always go back to that father with his son in the restroom saying, wash your hands. Son doesn't do it. And he says, I'm Abba. That helped me understand on a whole new level that intimacy is directly connected to obedience and that they both go hand in hand. So what was point number one? I'm intimate with my father. Mm -hmm. How many of you guys just want to make that your prayer? God, I want to be intimate, which means I got to go, I got to move my heart closer and closer to you. And you said that you're going to move even closer to me. Mm -hmm. I want to be intimate with you. And then point number two was what? I'm obedient to my father. And the two go hand in hand. If I choose not to be obedient, I won't have intimacy with him. I have to obey. That's what the very name means. My father who I obey. Mm -hmm. And if we do what God tells us to do, if we follow his word, scripture tells us that we're going to be successful. We're going to be prosperous. We're going to have a happy life. We just have to do what God's word tells us to do. And if you're listening to this message, uh, we just want to encourage you, you know, God wants you to do what he's called you to do. In fact, I want to give you this final truth. Write this down. Strive to obey every day. It's Mm -hmm. so simple. Strive to obey every day. You want the prosperous life. You want the successful Mm -hmm. life. You want a life that's happy. Strive to obey every day. Who are we obeying? Not just the Lord, but first and foremost, God, our Father. But The Bible tells us to obey our parents. The Bible tells us to submit to one another. The Bible tells us to submit to to governing authorities, whereas it doesn't contradict the word of God to the level that we're able to as Mm -hmm. Christians. It's just a life of submission and obedience. And it's so hard for us to do. But if we do it, we're going to have an intimate God. We're going to be intimate with our God. We'll we'll be obedient with God. So if you listen to this message and you hear it, and you say, you know, I just, I'm not sure where I am with God. This is the moment in the service where we just stop everything and we give a, what we call an invitation. And it's an invitation for people who are not right with God to be made right with God. And we know that we don't make people right with God. Mm-hmm. The church doesn't, and there's no pastor, there's no person. It's really a person hearing the gospel, the good news, and saying, I'm not right with God, but I know, according to the truth I've heard, that if I pray a prayer of of repentance, if I ask the Lord to forgive me, that's how you're made right with God, is by crying out to God. The Bible says that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if that's you... It could be one of two things. Maybe there was a time in your life where you were walking with God Mm -hmm. and right now you know that you're so far away from Him that you just feel God compelling you to to say, get right with me again. Or maybe you just have never really had the opportunity Mm -hmm. at any point in your life to pray a prayer. And somehow, you know, by the grace of God, you're watching this, you're hearing the gospel and you're saying, you know, that's me. The majority of people watching this are believers. You've you've answered the invitation. You accepted the invitation. The Bible Mm -hmm. says that Jesus stands at the door and he knocks. And most of you have opened that door and you've let the Lord into your life and he's become your Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. But if it's been a while and you're away from God or you've never really asked the Lord to be your Savior, it's a simple prayer. And if you would like to do that right now, we do everything that we do as a church is for this moment, for people who are far away from God to be connected to God and to be saved, people who are lost to find Jesus. If you'd like to pray that prayer right now, we want to just give you the invitation and the opportunity. Would you just simply pray this prayer and repeat after me and say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I come to you in Jesus' name. Jesus, Jesus, I need you. I need you. I'm lost without you. I'm lost without you. I believe you died for me. I believe you died for me. So that I can have eternal life. So I could have eternal life. I ask you to be. I ask you to be. My Lord and Savior. My Lord and Savior. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to forgive me. Of all my sins. Of all my sins. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For saving me. For saving me. And for setting me free. And for setting me free. I belong to you. I belong to you. All that I have. All that I have. And all that I am. And all that I am. Is yours. Is yours. And I will serve you. I will serve you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for praying that prayer. That's what it's all about. If you did pray that prayer, 
and you, you ask the Lord to, to forgive you and to give you eternal life, what we want to do is we want to connect with you. And we actually have this little booklet called Now What? We talk about it every service and every week. It's a very thin seven-day devotional that helps you. What do you do after that moment? Mm -hmm. After you pray that prayer, now what? And this book tells you how to get into God's Word, how to, how to pray, how to get connected to a church. It's powerful. We want to help get this booklet into your hand. And we are having church services on Sunday in mm -hmm. person. You can come up to the church throughout the week and get one of these booklets. Or we could just try to figure out a way to connect with you. But uh, along with the booklet, it's really important that we connect with you and follow up with you. We have a whole team of people in ministry that that's what they that's their passion is when people pray that prayer they follow up and they just check on you and mm -hmm. we want to do that so if you prayed that prayer you can message us you can say it in the comments you can let us know next time next time you're at thrive whatever's most convenient but we also have, have a phone number you can call and that phone number is 303-428-9535 why are we giving you that number? So you can call it and say, I prayed that prayer right. and I want to start my journey with God. I, I heard about that now. What book? Look, I want to get one of those. I want people to pray with me and mm -hmm. encourage me. I want to get plugged in and connected. That's what it's all about. So we're so grateful that you joined mm -hmm. us and that you're with us. You took time to be with us. And I do want my wife to just pray a brief prayer of sure. blessing over our, our lives. And again, thank you so much. Let's just continue to grow with an intimacy and let's do our best to strive to be obedient to our Amen. Abba Father. Amen. Okay, let's pray. God, we come to you right now and we just thank you for this opportunity to be able to study your word thank and you, to God. be encouraged and encouraging to each other. And God, I just ask that in this next week that you'll just go with us. Yes, God, God, that you'll put us in the spots where you want us to be, to be able to connect and just be your hand extended. Yes, God. God, help us be people that are close with you, Amen. intimate with Jesus. you, and obey you. And we thank you for that, God. Yes, thank God. you you don't rule in, with like a ruler, like uh, yes, just God. harsh, God, but that you, you love us and you love us so much to require obedience out of yes, us. God. So Lord, we just trust you and we just give you our week. I plead the blood of Jesus yes, over God. our church family. Just cover them, make them strong Amen. emotionally and physically, spiritually, God. And we thank you for that. In your precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for being with us. We love you and we can't wait to see you. God bless. God bless you, everybody. Once again, it's Pastor Jake. And I just want to take a moment and thank everyone for your faithfulness and your giving. You know, we understand that giving is an extension of our worship. It's what God has called every single one of us to do. As a matter of fact, I think about a verse that we all know, John three sixteen. I know it and you know it. The word of God tells us that for God so loved the world that he did what? He gave his only son. And we understand that giving is totally connected to, to love. You cannot separate the two. I don't believe you can love without giving and without being selfless. That's what God modeled for us by giving his only son. And I see that in Thrive Church. The way we give, you know, we, we just give all glory to God because we want to give in such a way where, where we, we see the connection between giving and love. We love our community, so we give to our community. We love our kids in Thrive Academy in Ethiopia. So we give without reservation. We give selflessly. And that's just so connected, those two thoughts of love and giving. So thank you, Thrive Church. We just want you to know that as you give to the Lord, God's going to take what we give and he's going to bless it and he's going to use it to reach souls for Jesus. So one more time, if you'd like to give online, you can always visit our website at wethrive.org and you can hit the donate tab. And you can also text the word, all one word, we thrive to 77977 and our church is also open throughout the week we have several people who come by and they they give their offering that way but we just want to thank you again so much because you give so much it just shows that God's love is in your heart God bless you Thrive Church